that excitement in the air. Amen. Good Good morning. And welcome to the Boulevard Church of Christ, Sunday morning worship, live and in color. Amen, somebody. So good to see you this morning. We're thankful to our Heavenly Father for his goodness toward us and that uh, he has blessed us to make it through another week. Uh, Regardless of whatever challenges we may have faced, we got through it. And we're here on this time side yet again and in the house of God on this first day of the week uh, to worship him uh, in spirit and in truth. Uh, Amen, somebody. And we are here because, not because we've been good folk, but because we got a good God. Amen. Amen. We just ought to be grateful every day uh, that we have uh, such a privilege uh, because uh, the way that God loves us He wants us to love each other without any conditions, uh, without uh, any uh, obligations. Uh, God wants us to love one another the same way that he loves us because this is how the world knows that we belong to him. Amen. So say this with me. We love love because God first loved us. us. Point at all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. Ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, somebody. Amen. 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 Because of God's love, we are also thankful for this blessed privilege that we have uh, to go to him in prayer uh, wherever we are, whenever we need to talk to God. Uh, We have this blessed privilege because his son Jesus died on our behalf. We didn't deserve it. But because God loved us, he gave us Jesus uh, to die in our stead to save us from our sin. And because uh, Jesus died, he he broke down that middle wall of partition. Amen, somebody. Now we have direct access to God to be able to talk to him uh, day and night. And we just ought to be grateful. Uh, because uh, uh, in in the midnight hour, if we're struggling, yes, we can call on God. Uh, amen, amen. And, uh, we are thankful for this blessed privilege that we enjoy each and every day, and particularly as we come together in corporate worship uh, to worship our Father. Uh, we share these uh, various prayer requests. On behalf of those who have made their request known, uh, and as always, we ask that you please uh, take down these requests uh, in your prayer journals and in your personal devotional time. Uh, Please uh, talk to God uh, on behalf of those who have made their request known, and we know that if it is according to God's will, uh, God will hear, uh, and he will answer. Uh, Continue to be in prayer for the Backus family uh, during the loss of uh, Brother Backus' brother, uh, Dwight Backus. uh, Services are tentative uh, at this particular time, and uh, as soon as we have the final arrangements, we will be sure uh, to get those to our Boulevard family. Uh, because uh, we want to uh, support this family however we can. Amen. Amen. And so as soon as we get the funeral arrangements, we will make sure that we get those uh, to you. Continue to be in prayer for Sister Gwyneth McDowell, uh, who uh, was scheduled uh, to have been released uh, on last week to go to uh, the rehab center and begin rehab. So uh, we will get that information uh, regarding the rehab center. And again, we will get that out to uh, the Boulevard family uh, so that we can continue to be an encouragement. Uh, Amen to Sister uh, McDowell as she continues to go through uh, health challenges. But in the meantime, let's be in prayer, continuous prayer, Uh, on her 
her behalf as she prepares to uh, go through uh, rehab. Uh, be in prayer for the grandfather of Sister Sarah Stringfellow, Mr. Lawrence Wilson, who is not doing well. Uh, let's pray that uh, uh, God will bless his health if it is his will uh, to be restored. Sister Patricia Clark uh, is requesting prayer uh, for traveling grace for the Clark and Armstrong family uh, as they travel to Honolulu, Hawaii uh, on August 10th. Uh, prayers for traveling grace to and from, and uh, we certainly want to pray that they will be safe uh, there uh, and that uh, all will go well during their stay. Uh, Brother and Sister Paul and Luveda King is requesting prayer for traveling grace as they travel to Hot Springs, Arkansas, uh, and then Dallas, Texas, uh, for one week uh, as they leave this afternoon uh, following worship. So let's be in prayer uh, for Brother and Sister Paul uh, and Luveda King as they prepare to travel uh, this week. Brother Maurice Powers is requesting prayer for healing grace uh, for his brother, Eddie West, uh, who was released from the VA hospital last week uh, and is now at the Waters of Memphis Rehab Center. So let's uh, continue to be in prayer for Brother Eddie West, a uh, longtime minister to the Midwest Church of Christ uh, there in uh, or west of Coldwater, rather, Mississippi. So let's uh, be in prayer for Brother Eddie West and his health, uh, uh, that God will continue to bless him to be restored. And then for all of our uh, Boulevard family, uh, those who are sick and infirm, those who, are, uh, who have recently lost loved ones, uh, let's continue to lift all of them up uh, in prayer um, as they uh, face uh, the challenges of uh, everyday life and those uh, challenges uh, that lie ahead, having lost uh, the ones they love, who they love so dear. For our city, uh, particularly as we prepare, our children and teachers prepare to go back to school uh, this week, and we'll have uh, more to say about that uh, toward the uh, close uh, of our worship on this morning, but certainly want to be in prayer uh, for all of our teachers and students as they prepare to go back to school for this city. Uh, as we are still engulfed in trying times, uh, I'm sure you heard of the incident on last week. School has not even started. And somebody is trying to get into the school. Started shooting, and uh, we we, uh, uh, we we just we just live in days that that we gotta constantly twenty four seven. We gotta be in prayer because uh, we we live in days where uh, men have no regard for for life nor for themselves, right. uh, and for the regards of others. And so we got we gotta constantly be in prayer, and of course the nation uh, as we continue to see and deal with challenging times. Uh, prices are going up, um, massive heat waves, uh, just a number of things that's going on in our society. Let's continue to be in prayer for our society uh, that men will turn from, out from their own devices uh, and turn to uh, the will of God. Go with us just now as we uh, go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Most gracious God in heaven, to you, O oh God, our healer, redeemer, life giver, to you, O oh God, who helps us to bear our burdens. 
helps us to live life in a manner that is pleasing to you. Thank you, Father, for love that is unconditional, love that is unmatchless, uh, love that is unselfish. We don't deserve anything you do for us, but because you are God and because you are love, whatever we need, you ensure that as your people we have everything to sustain us day in and day out. And for that, oh God, we are thankful. We're not always appreciative. Oftentimes we take for granted uh, just how good you are to us. But oh God, uh, we thank you for looking beyond our faults and seeing our every need. And we're thankful for this blessed privilege that we have to come before your majestic throne yet again. And Father, no matter how many times we come, uh, no matter how many times we call on your name, you never turn us away. Thank you for being a God whose ears are never dull of hearing and whose arms are always outstretched, ready to help in times of need. And so we come today on behalf of those who have made their request known. Father, we ask your continued blessings on behalf of the Bacchus family, particular Brother Bacchus, uh, during the loss of his brother Dwight. Father, please bless them with your comforting grace. Give them strength uh, as they uh, mourn the loss of one who they love so dear. Uh, hold them up with your mighty arm. Help them, Father, to know that you're able to see them through uh, these trying times. Father, bless us as extended family to continue to be a source of comfort and strength for them as they go through this season. And not only for them, but so many of our Boulevard family uh, who are feeling the chilly winds of loss uh, as many have lost loved ones in recent weeks. And we just ask, Father, for a double portion of strength for all of these families. Uh, who uh, are filling the absence of ones of the ones who they love and bless us as extended family to continue to be a, a source of strength and comfort uh, for them uh, as they go through this time. Father, we ask your continued blessings for Sister Gwyneth McDowell uh, as uh, she has been scheduled to be released from the hospital uh, and now uh, into rehab to begin uh, physical rehab. Father, we ask your continued blessings for her health, uh, that all will go well with her, that those who will uh, engage in the rehab will do the right thing the right way at the right time, uh, that her health will be restored. Father, we ask your continued blessings that her spirit will continue to be lifted and that she will continue to look to you from whence comes all of our help and bless us as extended family to continue to be an encouragement for her uh, as she goes through uh, her season of sickness. Uh, and Father, for all of those uh, of our Boulevard family uh, who are dealing with health challenges, please bless uh, in a powerful way as only you can. Uh, Father, we, we know you to be a healer uh, in all of our sick rooms. And so uh, we cast uh, all of their cares on you because we know that you care for us. And Father, we uh, continue to be uh, in prayer for 
those who are traveling, uh, even those who are perhaps traveling today, uh, many among our number are uh, traveling, the Wiggins family and many others, we just ask your blessings for them. And then, Father, for those who will be traveling, uh, later this week and today, we ask your blessings for brother and sister uh, Paul and the Luveda King as they will be traveling this afternoon uh, to Hot Springs and to Texas, Dallas, Texas, uh, for a week. We ask your blessings for traveling grace. Put your uh, arms of protection around them and those traveling around them, that all will be safe and that uh, you will protect them in their locations. Uh, and then, Father, bless them to return home safe uh, at the appointed time and find all well when they return. We pray the same for Sister Patricia Clark uh, and the Clark and uh, Armstrong family as they prepare to travel to Hawaii. Uh, bless them with safe passage uh, as they travel. Be with uh, the flights and all who have anything to do with the flight and get them to their destination safely and keep them safe while in that location. And then, Father, at the appointed time, bring them back home safe and sound that they will find all well when they return. And Father, we, uh, we ask that you be with this nation. Uh, we need you. Every day and every hour, we, we face so many trying times. And, Father, even as we prepare to, uh, for our children and teachers and administrators to go back to school this week, uh, there have already been incidents uh, involving our schools. Uh, Father, we just need you to put your arms of protection around all of our schools, our homes, our first responders, our teachers, our students, and Father, just uh, be a hedge uh, to keep all hurt and harm uh, from us as we go about our daily duties. And Father, we ask that you be with this nation, change the hearts of men from doing those things that are evil, and turn the hearts of men to uh, doing your will and doing the things that are right and pleasing in your sight. And bless us as your people uh, to strive to be lights in a world uh, that is filled with darkness. And now, God, as we prepare uh, to engage in this worship on this morning, assist us in laying aside uh, all distractions uh, and thoughts that will hinder us and help us to focus solely on giving you the worship that you desire. And that is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified. May the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. In the name of him who died on Calvary. Uh, but yet lives forevermore. In the name of Jesus. Let every heart. Together say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. Before we start our worship off this morning, just check your devices, make sure they're on silent as we attempt to praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning. I really love the Lord, yes, I really love the Lord, you don't know what he's done for me, he gave me the victory, and I love him. I love him. I really love the Lord. Yes, I really love the Lord. Yes, I really. 
chapter 50 and the verses of 15 through 21 again that's Genesis chapter 50 and the verses are 15 through 21 and it reads when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead they said perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him so they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, Before your father died, he commanded, saying, Thus you shall say to Joseph, I beg you, please forgive the trespass of your brothers and their sin, for they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespass of the servants of the, the God of your father. And Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly to them. I read unto you Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21.
morning, church. Let us pray. Our God and Father in heaven, once again, be blessed as Father to all be here, Father, and to represent our families, Father, in worship to you. Father, we thank you, Father, for being our God. We thank you for being the God of earth and also the God of all the heaven, Father. For all the earth and everything thereof is yours, Father. Father, we ask for your protection, Father. Father, we ask for your protection, Father, from, from famine, Father. We ask for your protection from homelessness, Father. Father, we ask for your protection, Father, and guidance, Father, for our children and our family, Father. Father, we ask now that you be with the man serving, Father. You come to proclaim your word, Father, that he may teach your gospel to us, Father, in all its simplicity and its purity, Father, and that we may have a receptive heart, Father, and those that are on social media may also, Father, ask what must they do to be saved, Father. And your people, Father, also may choose, Father, to keep their garments clean behind your gospel, Father, that all, Father, may be saved, Father, that your face be not against us when you come, that we may be able to see your face in peace, Father. Father, we thank you for everything. We thank you, Father, for this day, Father, and we ask, Father, that as we continue to worship, that our worship may be acceptable and pleasing to you, Father. Father, we come to you in your son's name, Emmanuel, King of kings, Prince of Prince. Prince of Peace. Father, we come to you, Father, because you've given us this avenue of communication, and we thank you. We thank you for his blood that was sacrificed. We thank you for his example that was given, Father. Thank you, Father, for his healing and for those that are dead that he raised, Father. Father, we thank you, Father, for Yahshua. And we come, Father, now in his name, Father, and through him, Father, giving you all the glory, giving you all the praise, Father, that you may be glorified. We ask, Father, that this worship be accepted of you and that you forgive us of all our sins. For this is our prayer. In your son, Yeshua's name. Amen. As we continue to praise our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He rock my rock. My soul is chilling. He's my wheel. Oh, yes. In the middle of the way, I know he'll never He'll never, never let me down. He's such a jewel, jewel that I have found. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yes, sir. I love his name. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yes, sir. I love his name. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, sir, I love his name. You know that. I love to You know that. I love Praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock. My rock. My rock. So the children, he's my wheel. Oh, yes, in the middle of the way, I know he'll never, he'll never, he'll never, never let me down. He's such a jewel, jewel that I have found. Thank God. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah. Yes, sir, I love his name, thank God, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, yes, sir, I love his name, thank God, hallelujah, yeah, hallelujah, yes, sir, I love his name, you know that, come on in, I love to praise his holy name. We truly ought to love to praise uh, God's holy name. 
because as God's folk, yeah, we got something to praise him about. Yeah. Amen. Somebody, you remember when Jesus was entering into the city and, and folk were laying palm branches and, and shouting and praising God and, and, and folk, uh, the Pharisees and other folk were trying to, uh, you need to tell your folk to hush. Jesus said, if I make them hush, even the rocks don't cry out. Uh, God's folk ought to praise his name. Because God is good, not just some of the time. But God is sure enough a mighty good God. All the time. And that's why I'm grateful today that, that I know him. And he knows me. And I'm his child uh, because every opportunity I get, I'm going to praise his name because he's been mighty good uh, to me uh, and uh, to my family. And he's been good to you uh, and to your family. We just ought to be thankful. Always good to be with the people of God in the house of God. Uh, as we attempt to try to do the will of God uh, up in here in this place. Amen, somebody. Uh, amen. Uh, we, we are thankful to see those who are our guests and friends uh, on this morning. We will recognize you in a personal way uh, as we conclude this worship experience. But we just say to you uh, at this point, uh, welcome to the Boulevard. Amen. Amen. To all of our brothers who have led us thus far uh, in our worship, thank you for how you have led us and the powerful way in which you have led us. Um, and we are thankful to those who will come uh, later in our worship as well. But to Brother Garland for leading us uh, in those songs of Zion. Brother Stokes for the reading of the scripture. Uh, and for Brother Fleming for leading us in prayer. Uh, we are grateful to you uh, on this morning. It's so good to be able to look out and see your smiling faces. Amen. 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 And not have to try to be up here trying to figure out who folk are. Amen. Now, you know, I'm still, for those of you who sit way back, you know, because, you know, I'm getting old and can't see good. I still might have to try to figure out who some folk are, but at least I can see your face now. Amen, amen. And so we're thankful that God has brought us thus, thus far. Uh, we're kind of on the other side of this pandemic, even though I'm hearing uh, some things that uh, might be kind of uh, back on the rise, but we're going to keep praying. Amen. And God keeps on protecting us uh, and that he keeps us, continues to keep us safe uh, in this place. Amen. Uh, Genesis chapter 50. Uh, you know, I hope you ain't have no problems trying to, <laughs> trying to find it. <clears throat> uh, Genesis chapter 50. Uh, we'll begin reading in verse... 15, um, share this message that we hope will be encouraging on this morning. Uh, as, as we look about us uh, in our nation, uh, you know, in our city, in our families, um, relationships are, are, are struggles, are getting to be struggles. And, and um, because of, of issues in relationships, people are doing all manner of things. And, and, um, much harm in many cases. So, uh, uh, harm is coming as a result of um, not being able to, to really uh, communicate and do the things that, that we ought to do in interpersonal relationships. Um, I think Joseph uh, gives us something to look at uh, this morning as, as we kind of uh, think along 
uh, this whole issue, Genesis 50, uh, verse 15, beginning, and when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger to Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall ye say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto the evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespasses of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God made it unto good to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Now therefore fear ye not. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. Brother Mitchell talked about being kind on last week. Powerful message. Verse 20 again. But as for you, you thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good. This thought for a few minutes. Don't dish out dirt when dirt is done to you. Don't dish out dirt because the tendency is Yeah, you want to get folk back. Don't dish out dirt. When dirt is done to you. One of the things that we struggle with as humans is the ability or the like thereof to let stuff go when we have been wrong. Everybody got rights. And because of this prevailing attitude of free speech, folk feel as if they can say and do whatever they feel like. And the other side of that coin is uh, that Okay, if you feel like you can treat me any kind of way, I feel like I can come back at you because of how you treat me. And now you got a mess. Because everybody now has the attitude that if you're going to cuss at me, I'm going to cuss you back. If you cut me off in traffic, I'm going to cut you off in traffic. Uh, if you kick my dog, I'm going to kick your cat. And before you know attention's bill, folk are hurt emotionally and physically and sadly in some cases, lives are even lost. But what the text will reveal to us today is that there is an example of Joseph that 
that we can follow in the midst of challenging relationships, and that is, don't dish out dirt when dirt is done to you. Here's, here's, here's why. Here's how, uh, here's how you do that. Here's how you keep from dishing out dirt when, when, when dirt uh, is done to you. First of all, the guilty will get got. We're going to see this. We're going to kind of walk through Genesis a little bit. Genesis chapter 42, verse 6 and following. You don't have to dish out dirt when dirt is done to you because the guilty will get got. Here's the second reason why. You don't, uh, you don't have to dish out dirt because the glory will ultimately go to God. Amen. We'll see that as we close in verses uh, 15 through 21 of, of Genesis uh, chapter 50, as we try to, in our own feeble way, label from this thought this morning, don't dish out dirt when dirt is done to you. This narrative begins in Genesis chapter 37 when Joseph, uh, the youngest son of Israel, uh, was born in his old age. And as a result, uh, Israel loved Joseph more uh, than his other sons and made him a coat uh, of many colors. We'll see this in Genesis 37, uh, 3 following. And uh, because uh, Joseph was a special son. His dad had an affection. Because, see, <clears throat> it's something about having boys. It's something even more special when you get old. <laughs> and you have a boy. You you in the grocery store. You got your your little boy walking with you, and usually, in fact, <laughs> when uh, when our second child, our youngest, came along, we were forty two. <laughs> Hannah uh, with me in the grocery store one day, sitting in the basket, got to the checkout counter. And uh, lady, uh, she didn't, you know, I I'm sure she thought she was, you know, being kind. Uh, this your little grandbaby? <laughs> no, this is mine. <laughs> Some, you, when, when, when you have a child in your old age, it's, you know, you kind of have a tendency to stick your chest out a little bit. And because Joseph was born in his father's old age, he had a special affection. And so uh, the Bible says that he made him this coat uh, of many colors. But the mother boys had a problem uh, with Joseph. The Bible says that they hated him. Uh, and so they, 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 they came up with a plan because uh, Joseph was a dreamer and, and he told his brothers his dream and he, he, he told them that one of his dreams was that uh, his sheaves was going to be over their sheep. And their sheaves are going to be obedient to his sheaves. And so because of the dreams and because of the special affection uh, that his father showed, it, his brothers hated him. So they, they devised a plan uh, to get rid of him. Uh, they, they wanted to take his life. They said, no, we can't do that. And so they decided 
to uh, Joseph, his father sent him down to check on him as they were, you know, taking care of the sheep. And uh, they got a hold of his coat of many colors. And, and what they decided to do was take the blood of a goat after they killed and, and, and cover their coat in blood. Uh, and take it back to his dad. And what they end up doing with Joseph, they threw him in a pit. And left him. And along comes the Ishmaelites. And so they sell him uh, into slavery uh, to the Ishmaelites as, 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 they, as they came through. But they took the coat and took it back to his dad and told him a wild beast. Uh, took Joseph's life because, see, they, they took the guilt off of them even though they knew that they were selling him into slavery, but they gave the daddy the impression that he was dead by a wild animal. And so by the time we get to Genesis 39, the Israelites have now taken Joseph and brought him to Potiphar's house. And he found favor, the Bible says, in Potiphar's sight, and he put him in charge of everything that he had. And, and uh, the Bible says that he uh, was a, a goodly man, that, that, he, that he had favor. In other words, uh brother was 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 a young Hebrew uh ripped <laughs> muscular <laughs> brother and sister Potiphar <laughs> laid her eyes on him and, and she wanted him. And uh, the opportunity came uh, when, when Potiphar left home and left Joseph uh, in charge. And as uh, soon as he uh, got out of sight, she went after him. Joseph said, I can't, I can't do this. My Lord has given me in charge of everything. The only thing that he has kept from me is you. I can't sin against you and him by taking it. But look, uh, when, when, when folk have a desire uh, uh, to do evil, uh, I don't care how strong you try to be. Uh, folk ain't going to be content until they have a way. And so Joseph decided that the only way I'm going to get out of this situation is I got to remove myself from this house. And so the Bible says that he took off, started running, and evidently he was running so fast that his jacket was flying. <laughs> and she, she grabbed his jacket and he ran up out of, out of his coat. See, church, sometimes uh, uh, when, 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 when sin is on you so heavy, uh, you got to start running. You got to run away from because uh, I don't care how strong you think you are. If you stay there, you're going to find yourself in the midst of something uh, that's going to cause you a whole lot of problems later on. Uh, Joseph realized, uh, I need to get out of his house. And so she got his coat. Now she's going to try to use this against Joseph. When Mr. Potiphar get back to the house, 
I got something I can, because he didn't do what I wanted to do. Now I'm going to use his garment against him. But see, when you do right by God, and, and we'll, we'll see this throughout uh, Joseph's life, all through the turmoil, uh, turmoil rather, that he went, to, went through. Because the Bible says uh, on several occasions, but the Lord was with Joseph. And when the Lord is with you, even when folk try to trip you up and trap you, God will see you through it. The Bible says that when Papa got back to the house, see, she had his jacket. Look, your, your servant tried to get at me <laughs> while you were gone. And here's the evidence that he tried, because I got his coat. He was in the house. In the bedroom. I got his coat. What you going to do? Well, you remember the story. Potiphar throws him in prison. Because uh, naturally, you're going to believe what your wife said. That's why, brother, you need to know your wife. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, cause uh, if, if okay. Anyway, let me move on. <laughs> because he he refused Potiphar's wife, he he now ends up in prison. And as the story goes, he he meets this butler and baker. And they both have dreams. And uh, he, he says to uh, the butler, you, you will be restored uh, to your place in, in the king's palace. But, but he tells the baker, you're going to die. You ain't going to make it. Uh, and so because he finds favor, uh, in the sight uh, of the butler, he, he, he's back in uh, the palace, and Pharaoh now has a dream. Nobody can interpret the dream, and so he remembers this young lad that he met in prison. And, and he sends for him, and, and, and he brings Joseph uh, to Pharaoh's house. And Joseph is now... In Pharaoh's house, he interprets the dream. He has a dream about the famine, the seven fat calves, seven lean uh, calves, and he, he tells them what's going to take place. Uh, and, and because Joseph interprets the dream, uh, he now is over Pharaoh's house and rides in the second chariot behind uh, Pharaoh. And now here comes the famine. Uh, and everybody uh, got to go through Joseph to get coin, including his brothers who have no idea that the one who they are now pleading with for food is the same one that they tried to put away in the pit. Church, you got to be careful. Yes, sir. See, stuff will come back around. You got to be, be careful how you treat folk. Uh, Cause stuff will come right back around and slap you dead in your face. These same brothers who tried to put Joseph away in a pit is now pleading with him for food. Mahalia Jackson was said that if you if you're gonna dig one ditch, you better dig two. Because the trap you set just might be for you. Now in chapter 42, they have a face-to-face -face encounter with Joseph. And he will show us that you don't have to ditch out dirt when dirt 
is done to you. Why? Because the guilty will get got. Right. Bible says, verse 6, chapter 42, beginning, and, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and uh, he it was that sold to all the people of the land, and Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him, and their faces to the earth, and Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made him, himself strange unto them, and, and, and spake roughly unto them, and he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food, and Joseph knew his brethren, but they, they didn't know him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them and said unto them, Ye are spies uh, to see the nakedness of the land you are come. Now you got to remember, it's been 22 years. 22 years had passed since Joseph had last seen his brothers. He was 17 years old uh, when they sold him. And now it is believed that Joseph uh, was nearing 40 years old. 22 years had passed. They have forgotten what they did. But Joseph is still, uh, is now remembering the dream that he dreamed back in Genesis 37 relative to uh, uh, their sheaves falling under obedience to his sheaves. And so uh, he's now recalling uh, this. So, so 22 years uh, has passed uh, since uh, Joseph uh, has last seen uh, his brother. Church, that's why you got to make sure that you got God on your side. Because, see, for somebody who didn't know God, the Bible says, and the Lord was with Joseph. See, if you don't know God, 22 years, this stuff is festering. 22 years, anger is building up. 22 years, I'm going to get back at somebody. 22 years, y'all tried to kill me. 22 years, uh, I, I didn't know uh, what was going to happen to me. All the stuff I went through, I ended up in prison uh, because of y'all. Y'all sold me into slavery. And now, here you are, pleading to me for coin. I ought to let you stop. But church, that's why you can't dish out dirt. When dirt is done to you, because you go against God's will. God shows us how to be bigger than other folk through the life and the example uh, of Joseph, it would appear that perhaps Joseph is being vindictive toward his brothers because of, of what they did, because the Bible says that, uh, that he spoke roughly unto them. But you have to remember, Joseph is now the governor. And as governor, he has to fulfill his, authority, his authoritative role in Eastern culture. And it is believed, even to this day, when you come from a foreign land, uh, you, you are looked upon as a stranger and as a spy. And so, uh, because Joseph is now governor, he has to fulfill his authoritative role, and so he has to vet them as he would anybody else uh, who came from a foreign land. 
but it just so happened that these are his brothers who did dirt to it. But now they're coming to him for food. They're coming to him uh, for COVID. If that had been us, we would have started rehearsing. You remember? Yeah, yeah. You thought, yeah, I thought I was dead. You remember? I said, now you, now you need me. See, that would have been us. Joseph. Exemplified. The spirit of God. And, and, and not dishing out dirt because dirt uh, had been done to him. The Bible uh, says in verse 9, he, he remembered the dream uh, that he had back in chapter 37. And so in verses 10 through 13, uh, they, they tried to convince Joseph that they uh, are not spies. Bible says in verse 11, we are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And they said, thy servants are 12 brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father. Watch the Bible. And one is not uh that language implied that there's one brother that's dead. Now they finna, they finna get, a, get caught up in a lie. And see, when you tell one lie, you got to keep on telling lies to cover up that one lie that you forgot that you told. They said the, the, the youngest boy is at home and one is not. They hadn't figured out that the one that they're claiming to be dead is the one they're talking to trying to get food. God will allow stuff that's why you ain't got to ever worry about doing nothing, getting back and forth, because every time the guilty will get got. You don't have to dish out dirt when dirt uh, is done to you. Watch what happens. Joseph says, no, y'all spies. So now you got to be proved. So here's, uh, here's what you do. Verse 16, he says, send one of you. And let him fetch your brother. And ye shall be kept in prison. That your words may be proved whether there be any truth in you. Or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely... Uh, you are spies. Now they're getting ready to be condemned by their conscience. The guilty going to get got, and you don't even have to lift a finger. Bible says in verse 21, they said one to another, we are verily guilty concerning our brother and that we saw the anguish of his soul when, we bes uh, when he besought us, and we were not here. Therefore, is this distress come upon us? Joseph tried to tell us, don't do this. Don't put me in this pit. We wouldn't listen. And now all the stuff 
that we did, they still hadn't recognized that the person they talking to is Joseph. But now he's telling us we got to go back and get our youngest brother and we, we just told him that one is dead. And so now all of this stuff is coming back to slap us in the face. See, when you're guilty, you'll be running looking over your shoulder and ain't nobody chasing you. Uh, you. You'll confess and ain't nobody asking you nothing. Proverbs 28.1, the wicked flee when no man pursue it, but the righteous are bold as a lion. See, when you give them stuff, your conscience start kicking in. They thought Joseph, still not knowing who he was, was being harsh with them, uh, but now they are remembering what they did. Man, he making us go back home to get our youngest brother. We told him that one of the brothers is not. He's dead. And so now the fact that, because now they know they lying. They know that Joseph was sold into slavery, but they told their daddy he was dead. And so now all this stuff is coming back to Hunter. And so now the conscience, the conscience is kicking in. Uh, 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 and, and so now they're trying to figure out uh, how we're going to get through this. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 40, uh, the verse is 12, for uh, innumerable evils have uh, compassed me about mine iniquities, have taken toll upon me so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore, my heart fails me when your conscience uh, starts eating you up. Uh, when, 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 you, when your heart uh, gets heavy and starts uh, failing and, and you realize uh, your iniquities are coming back around to visit you because of stuff you did. The guilty will get got. You don't ever have to do nothing to get back at folk who, who's done stuff to you. The Bible says in verse 22, uh, Reuben is now somewhat rebuking the others uh, for not listening. Verse 22 says, and Reuben uh, answered them saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, do not sin against the town. I took and told y'all <laughs> not to do it. And you in here. And so now, because y'all wouldn't listen, this is what we having to go through. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. The Bible says that Joseph weeps because even though they did him dirt, they were still his brothers. Even though they tried to get rid of him, they told his daddy, that he was dead. They were still his brothers. And church, sometimes the folk who are closest to you can cause you the most hurt. These are my brothers. I'm catching them in a lie. They saying, they telling me I'm dead. They don't know it's me. They're begging for food. But because they're my brothers, 
I got to help him out. I still got to do right by them. I still got to treat them right even though they mistreated me. It's still right to do right. I don't care how bad other folk do you. And so it caused Joseph, caused Joseph to weep, shed tears. Because they got my daddy thinking that I'm dead. And here they are, depending on me, when I could turn them away. They are depending on me for food for the family. I'm in a position I ain't got to give them nothing. But because they're my brothers. Parents. Children are going to do some stuff to rip your heart out. But because they're yours, you still got to love them. You still got to treat them with love, with kindness. Uh, if they're going to say some stuff that's going to break it. They're going to do some stuff that's going to, but they still your children. Your, your, your family, your siblings, your brothers and sisters. Sometimes even your spouse will do stuff uh, to just rip you apart. But because you are a child of God, and if there's any God in you, you're still going to love him. Oh, yeah, you're going to think about what they did. It ain't going to disappear. But you ain't got to try to get them back and do dirt because they did you dirt. What God wants us to do is to exemplify the example of his love toward others. And this is what Joseph is doing in this, in this scenario. When, when, when you read the rest of the chapter, Joseph Fills their sacks with corn. But watch this. When they, when they get back to the house and start pouring out the corn, they discover that he has put the money that they paid for the corn back in the sack. Now they really scared. Because they're trying to figure out what in the world is going on. They start talking among themselves. Uh, we, we, we are emptying our sacks, and now the sacks are full of money. We are, uh, the Bible says, and, and in one we are afraid because we can't figure out what's going on. Because we lied. They know they lied. They still don't know who Joseph was. But they know they lied about their brother being dead when he's alive. And their conscience started kicking in. But here is the love of God being displayed in the life of Joseph. Because not only did he give them coin. But he put the money that they paid for the corn with back in the sacks. See, you can get back at folk a whole lot better by doing right to them than you can by doing. Because, see, when you do right by folk who know they did wrong to you, when you treat them with kindness, you scare folk. Because they, they can't figure out where you're coming from. They, they don't know how to deal with you. They don't know what, what, what you're going to do next because they're trying to figure, okay, are they being nice to try to eat or to try to, they don't know. You can do a whole lot more to folk conscious by being nice and kind 
when they do stuff to you by trying to get back at them by doing dirt back to them. Don't dish out dirt when dirt uh, is done uh, to you. You keep doing good to others because the ones who are guilty uh, of doing the dirt, uh, God going to get them down the road. Well, after he shows us how the guilty would get got, he encourages us with the fact that the glory will go to God. By the time we get to chapter 45, Joseph finally reveals to his brothers who he is. The Bible says in verse 1, of chapter 45, then Joseph could not refrain himself before all of them that stood by him, and he cried, uh, cause every man to go out from me, and there stood no man with him, uh, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard, and Joseph said unto his brother, brethren, I am Joseph. Do as my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. Can you imagine? The one who they tried to get rid of, and then they sold in slavery. They probably thought he was still in prison. Or either in slavery at Potiphar's house. And now here they stand before him. They couldn't speak because they were a loss for words. Uh oh. How this is going to turn out? His brother could not answer him, but they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brother, Come. Come near to me, I pray you. And they, and they came. He said, I'm Joseph, your brother, whom you, whom, you, whom you sold into Egypt. Now, therefore, be not grieved, nor angry with yourselves that you sold me hither. For God did send me before you to preserve or preserve life. God sent me here for a reason. He didn't send me here to punish you. God sent me here to preserve your life, the life of this people. Uh, because uh, uh, of the famine. See, sometimes when folk do you dirt, uh, they don't realize that uh, they really send you up to be used by God to be a blessing to them and other folk. Uh, Y'all caused me to be sent here by God to be a blessing to you and everybody else. His brothers knew that they had messed up, but they, but they probably thought that while their daddy was still alive, uh, they had a safety net because in verses 10 uh, and 11 of chapter 45, uh, Joseph brings the whole family into the land of Goshen to be near him. And he said, uh, there I will uh, nourish thee. Everybody who is a part of my family, I want you close to me. Regardless of what my brothers have done, I want to nourish you. I want to take care of you because God has sent me from where you put me to preserve life. And, and, and I'm going to, rather than getting back at you, I'm going to nourish you. And provides you with what it is 
that you need. By the time we get to chapter 50, their father dies. And in his brother's mind, um, this probably going to change things. We don't, we don't have nobody to keep Joseph off of us. As long as daddy was alive, we was all right. But now daddy dead. We don't know how this is going to go. Look at the Bible, again, at verse 15. When Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead, they said, Joseph will peradventure hate us and will certainly requite us all the evil which we did unto him. All the stuff that we did, now he's going to bring that stuff back. He's going to put that stuff back on us. Because as long as daddy was alive, we was all right. But now daddy did. And uh, we kind of in a pickle. And to make matters worse, instead of being men and manning up and, and, and facing Joseph, they acted like some little wimps. And send a servant to speak on their behalf. See, when you mess up on your own stuff, uh, uh, you know, when you mess up, fess up. Uh, when, you, when you mess up, uh, admit that you did wrong. But they sent a servant. The Bible says in verse 16, they, they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, so shall ye say unto Joseph, forgive, I pray thee now, the trespasses of, their, of thy brethren and their sin, for they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of, their, of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for am I in the place of God? He asked a rhetorical question. And he gives an obvious answer. No, I'm not in God's place. I'm not God. I, I'm I can't punish you. It's not my job. Uh, not, nor do I have the authority or the ability or the power to judge you. I'm not God. Uh, when you do right, even when other folk don't do right by you, God will always get the glory because of your conduct. Right. Say that now. Romans chapter 12, the verses of 19 through 21. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Uh, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if that enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire uh, on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Here's the message summed up in verse 20 and 21. But as for you, you thought evil against me. God, God meant it unto good. To bring to pass as it is this day to save much people alive. Right. You meant 
for me to be a slave. But God meant for me to be your savior. You meant for me to be erased. But God meant for me to be elevated. You meant to hurt me. But God meant for me to help you. Church, that's why you can't dish out dirt when dirt is done to you because when others want to destroy you, God wants to develop you. When others intend for you to fail, God intends for you to flourish. When others seek to betray you, God seeks to bless you because the guilty will get got. And because you handle yourself right in the process, God will get the glory. Don't dish out dirt. When dirt is done to you. I, I close with this. Many years ago, uh, during uh, a Knicks Bullets playoff game, one of uh, the Bullets came up from behind the great walk to Clyde Frazier. Uh, and pushed him in the face. Strangely, the referee called a foul on Frazier. Frazier didn't complain. Uh, his expression never changed. He simply called for the ball and put in seven straight straight points, seven straight shots, rather, to win the game an amazing display of productive anger. He didn't try to get the player back. He didn't do dirt because dirt was done to him. He simply asked for the ball and made seven straight shots to win. What's your point, preacher? When, when dirt and as you play in this game of life, when folk do dirt to you, don't ask or don't try to get them back. Just ask for the ball. <laughs> Keep on shooting uh, the way that God has given you the ability to shoot in life. And God will give you the victory every time. Just ask for the ball. Don't try to get them back. Just ask for the ball. And I'm going to show you. What God would do when you try to do dirt to me. I'm, 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 talking, I'm talking to somebody today. And you, 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 you walking around, you've been dealing with stuff. Stuff has fest, been festering for, for years. Might be a situation with your friends, family, spouse, children, co-worker, even some church folk. And, and folk did stuff to you. And they were wrong. But, but you've been walking around all this time trying to figure out how to do dirt back to them. Stop wasting your time. Because, see, if, if people, when people do you wrong, they know they did you wrong. When folk mistreat you, they know, uh, you know, and folks sometimes will try uh, to plead ignorance. Well, I didn't know. Yes, you did. And, and see, Folk, folk know when they mistreated you, when they did you wrong. And, and if folk got any kind of conscience, your conscience is going to eat you up. And so you ain't got to say a word. You ain't got to do nothing. You just let them keep walking around with that guilt. Because the guilty don't get got 
if nothing else, by their own devices. See, the stuff that Joseph's brothers did to him, all that stuff came right back around and slapped him dead in the face. See, he told him in, in his dream, my sheaves going to rule over your sheep. And what happened? He ended up being governor over the land. And what they needed to survive in life, they had to go to him. See, folk who do you wrong, who do dirt to you, somewhere along the line, uh, they're going to need you. They're going to have to come back to you for stuff. If nothing else, they're going to need you somewhere along the line to pray for them. You ain't got to do, you ain't got to lift them. Don't do dirt when dirt is done to you. Because the guilty going to get got. And God, ultimately, because you conducted yourself properly in the midst of all that you've been going through, all the hurt, the pain that maybe you have suffered and, and had to deal with over the years, God will ultimately get the glory because of how you handle yourself in that whole process. I'm talking to somebody today. You've been, you've been struggling as to dealing with a situation in your life. Somebody did stuff to you, and, and, and maybe, maybe you've been trying to figure out how to get, let it go. Let it go. Let God handle it. He, he going to take care of it. It, it might be years. Because, see, sometimes the, the issue is we want folks to get got right now. No, that ain't always how God works. See, it might be years down the road. And sometimes you might not ever know that, that they got got. But they don't know. Don't worry about it. Let it go. You keep, you keep doing God's will. Like Joseph. And God will ultimately get to. I'm, maybe I'm talking to somebody today and, and you the guilty party. You, you know you mistreated your, your, your brother in Christ, your fleshly brother, your, your fleshly sister. Y'all ain't been, been 20 years. Y'all ain't spoke to each other. And, and I, I, it's sad, sad but true. I, I've heard of and known folk, physical families, folk who, and I'm trying to figure out, how can you go through life for years and not speak to your fleshly brother? I don't care what your differences are or were, but there are folk who have gone years and not spoken to their fleshly brother or fleshly sister. And maybe you are the guilty party. You did the dirt. You know you did it. You gonna get got, not by the one that you did it to, but by God somewhere along the line. And so maybe, maybe today, what you need to do is ask for forgiveness. Come ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you to own up to your stuff. Maybe it might not be. That you need to come down these aisles and, and actually, but maybe you need to go to your sibling, to your brother, your physical brother, or your physical sister, or your brother in Christ, or your sister in Christ. I was wrong for what I did. You know, I said that, you know, I mistreated you, you know, and I knew I, whatever, and, and there has been a rift between you for 15, 20, 30 years. You ought to get that. Because uh, time is short. Tomorrow ain't get to, this afternoon ain't guaranteed. There's a whole lot of stuff that we need to get fixed. And if you're the guilty party, 
Uh, you certainly are water. water. Get that clear because, see, eventually uh, guilt is going to eat you up. See, it's, it's going to mess with your mind for the rest of your life. If you got stuff that you need to be getting straight, if you sin against God, you, you ought to get that straight. It might, might not nobody know about it, but you and God. But there ought to be guilt that causes you to want to do right by God. You ought to come today and ask for the prayers of the righteous to help you right there. I'm talking to somebody today, you've not said yes to Jesus. You've not obeyed the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, you, 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 you're striving to, uh, trying to find out what it is that God wants uh, for your life. Maybe you're dealing with guilt because you've been doing things out in the world that, that you know are wrong, that you know that you shouldn't do. Maybe you're not, you're not familiar enough with what you ought to do uh, for God, but, but you know enough to know that the things you've been doing, you're guilty about the things that you've been doing that you know are not right. Come on today and say yes to Jesus by obeying the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. You do that by hearing the word, believing that same word, repenting, uh, confessing Christ to be the son of God, be buried in the water grave of baptism for the remission of your sins. Get up out of that water, a brand new creature, a brand new creation. Be faithful unto death and God will give you a crown that, that, that won't fade away. Relationships are important. Our relationship, and we'll eventually get back to our, our theme for this year, renewing our relationship with the Redeemer. Relationships are, are important. First of all, our relationship with God uh, is important. But our relationships, one with the other, interpersonal relationships are important. How, how we interact and deal uh, with folk out in the world, in our family, uh, in our community, because we we living in strange times, y'all. We living in difficult times, and, and folk have this this attitude, this notion that uh, you know I can kind of say and do what I want to do, and not necessarily really have to worry about having a real relationship with folk. That ain't true. We're going to interact with folk for the rest of our lives. And we're going and, and, and we got to know how to treat each other right. And, and Joseph gives us an example. That even in those relationships that don't sometimes go right. If, if you let God handle it. And, and you keep doing God's will, it's still going to come out in your favor. So I'm talking to somebody today. You need to say yes to Jesus. You, you're struggling in, in your relationships, whatever they may be. You, you, need, you need the prayers of the righteous. You need to say yes to Jesus. You need to be baptized. I'm talking to somebody today who needs to respond. Once you do it, say yes. You need to understand and sing this song of encouragement. Come on today. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory yes. today is yes. mine. I told Satan, Say yes. get thee behind. Say yes. Victory today is mine. Oh, joy is mine. Say yes. Joy is Say mine. Yes. Joy today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind, joy today is mine, oh, victory is mine, victory is mine, victory today is mine, I told Satan, get thee behind, Victory today is mine. Oh, peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace 
today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Peace today is mine. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, get thee behind. Victory today is mine. Don't dish out dirt when dirt is done to you. Thank you, Brother Jackson, again for another amazing message. And like you said, to sum it up best, just let it go. Um, we've, we've learned and we've heard as we've gone through life that hurt people hurt people. Uh, Joseph's brothers were hurt. They were jealous of the treatment that he was getting as the youngest, and so they tried to hurt him. But in the end, he chose not to do the same thing. And I believe that that's because, as it said in the Bible over and over again, God was with him. And when God is with you and when people try to hurt you or do things to you, understand that you don't have to do the same to them. Because the guilty will get God. And the glory will ultimately go to God. We have a couple who have responded. Uh, the first being Sister Davis, who says, continue to pray for my husband, Brother Carlton Davis. Uh, thanks to everyone that has sent cards, uh, visited, and thoughts of well wishes. Brother Carlton's 39 years at Yellow Freight has ended abruptly. No fault of his own. They are filing bankruptcy. Uh, Brother Carlton is protected by God. He is still... Uh, able to get his physical therapy and doctor's visits. God is able, but the Carlton is worshiping at Bluff Road this morning, and it's coming from this Sister Davis again. Uh, Sister Xavier Reed is asking for prayers for Brianna, who is traveling out of the country for school to America. She will be in Chile studying and living with a host family until December. Please continue to pray for her, Sister Reed, as uh, she trusts God to love her and protect her at all times. Uh, Sister Pearl Davis is asking for a prayer for Brother David Davis. He is not feeling well and remained at home for today. Sister Tally is asking for prayers for herself and Brother Tally. Uh, both of them are not feeling well this morning. They're having health issues, so she's asking that you keep them in their prayers. Uh, Sister Mary Campbell as well is asking for prayers to be uh, restored to full health. So we will pray for her on that, on that end. Uh, I have a card, and this is from Brother Landon Chalmers. Uh, he says, to my Boulevard family, by God's love and mercy, I've successfully arrived at school, and I'm doing well. I want to take time out of, uh, take time out to thank each and every one of you for your genuine love and support throughout my matriculation process. Living my life for God has been the best decision I've ever made, and the teachings here have largely contributed to that. To the leadership at the church, you are all doing great things for this Whitehaven community, and I pray that the work here stays fruitful. The road up ahead is going to get easier, but I know with God on my side, nothing is impossible. I ask that you all will be in prayer for me and my family as I start this new chapter in my life. Godspeed. Again, that's from Brother Landon Chalmers. Um, we have those who are standing, so will you please go with me in prayer? Dear Lord, we just come thank you for everything that you've done for us and everything that you will do for us. The many blessings that you've showered upon us, dear Lord, we just come thank you for everything. Uh, for waking us up this morning, for bringing us here to this church so that we can learn and we can get this amazing message from your man, Sever Brother Jackson DeLore. We just come thank you for putting him in this position and bringing him into our lives so that we may continue to grow spiritually alongside him and for you, DeLore. At this time, DeLore, we just come asking for prayers for our lifestyles and the way that we do things, DeLore. We just come praying that when life situations may have us in a hole and others are throwing dirt on us, we pray that we may be like the goat that we may shake it off and we may pat it down because they meant to harm us. But the Lord, your goal was to bring us out of that hole so that we may continue to go and, and on your path, the Lord. At this time, we want to pray for those who have health issues, the Lord, that you may continue to be with them. For brother and sister Tally, the Lord, who are not feeling well. For sister Mary Campbell, after her, her surgery, that you may continue to, to bring her to full health. For brother David Davis and for... Uh, and for all those else who are needing or who are in need of help, the Lord. For the situation for Brother Davis where he has lost his job, the Lord, we just come thank you for the opportunity for him to continue to get the therapy that he needs so that he may continue to, to go on about his life, the Lord.
for Sister Reed and the and the and the life change that she's about to have for Brianna and the life change that she's about to have as she studies in South America, do Lord, continue to be with her, continue to, to uh, keep her in your loving arms, and do the same for us as well, do Lord. At this time, we're just gonna ask them for forgiveness for all of our sins because we know we did wrong, and we can't confess that we did wrong, so we can go on your holy high. In this and all things that we pray in Jesus' name, Amen. As we prepare our hearts to commune, glory to his name, glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for clean sin for sin I've cried, there to my heart was the blood of Flight singing now glory to his name will sing and glory to his name precious name singing now glory to his name precious name there to my heart was the blood of light singing now glory to his name good morning brothers and sisters we've now come down to that part of the service to where we want to thank Jesus for the sacrifice that he made for our sins. For him coming to this sin-cursed world and teaching us about what thus saith the Lord. And then sacrificing his life so that we can be, be forgiven for our sins. We find in the book of Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. That the Bible said upon the first day of the week. The disciples came together to break bread. And Paul preached unto them. And, and, and The disciples came together and Paul preached unto them. And he continued his speech unto midnight. I apologize. We also find in the book of Mark, chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. And as they did eat, <clears throat> excuse me. Jesus took bread and blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily I say unto you, I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day that I drink it new in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Lord God, we, your humble servants, are in your presence one more time. Thanking you, dear God, for this opportunity to thank Jesus and to partake in the Lord's Supper, dear God. We ask, dear God, that you bless this cup, which represents Jesus' body that was ridiculed that was nailed to the cross, that had a plant of thorns 
planted on his head and where his body was hoisted up on the cross for all to see. We ask that you bless this bless this wine, dear God, that represents, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We ask that you bless the bread, which represents Jesus' body, and that you bless the cup, which represents his shedded blood that was shed for all of our sins. We ask, dear God, that you be with us and allow us to take this with a pure hand and a pure heart, always looking back to the cross for our Lord and Savior's blessings. These and other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. As we worship at the point of giving, when we fail to give in a manner that is pleasing to God, God will take care of the guilty. You remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira. In Acts chapter 5, they conspired together to defraud those to whom they were uh, taking their funds to, they agreed to sell the land for one price, and they took something else and laid it at the feet of those uh, who were receiving the funds. And uh, Sapphira went in. She died, and I told the same lie, he died. When we don't give uh, as God has prospered us, he will get the guilty because he, he will uh, withhold blessings that he has waiting to give you if we give the way that he wants us to. Let's not, let's not be like Ananias and Sapphira this morning. Let's, let's give in a manner that pleases God. And when we give uh, as we have been prospered, God will open up windows and pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive. Amen, somebody. Now, Boulevard, uh, we want to uh, encourage you. I know many of us uh, probably have been traveling, uh, going on vacation, and uh, we we forgot and, and took the Lord's money on vacation with us. Uh, last week was a low week, uh, probably the lowest we've had in in a while. Uh, we don't want to go backwards. Amen. Amen. God been too good to us. We've been doing well. Let's keep moving forward. Let's keep doing what God has called us to do in this place. Uh, if, 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 you, if you are guilty of not giving as you have been prospered, get that right. Uh, give, give the way that God prospers you to, to, to give because you don't want God to get you for not giving. Amen? Amen. Let's be mindful of that uh, as we give this morning. Uh, Gracious God, our Father, we're so grateful for your goodness toward us. Uh, all things that pertain to life and godliness, each and every day you bless us with. And Father, we thank you for being good to us. Uh, in spite of ourselves, we 
Uh, we don't deserve your goodness toward us, but uh, because you love us anyhow, you keep blessing right where we need to be blessed. And Father, our pray is, is that uh, you will bless us to give uh, as we have been prospered. And Father, we pray that the receiving of these funds be used with wisdom, guidance, and prudence as we seek to do kingdom business in this White Haven community, in the city of Memphis, and more in the world is our prayer. So in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say amen. God bless you this morning. Uh, we thank you, first of all, for being patient with us and for uh, indulging us this morning as we try it in our own feeble way to share this message from the Word of God. And we trust that you have been uh, encouraged uh, as a result of your being here uh, on this morning. To all of our guests and friends, it has been our great joy to have had you visiting with us here uh, on the boulevard uh, on this morning. There are a number of other places in this city you could have jo could have gone, but you chose to be with the people uh, of God on the boulevard. Uh, and we are thankful that you are here because, after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging that leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. Amen. If you're here with us today, you're visiting, and uh, you like to stand and let us know who you are and where you're visiting from, we certainly want to give you that privilege. Uh, are there those to my far right? You're visiting. You like to stand, let us know who you are and where you're visiting from. To my far right, you're visiting. All right. Then here in the center, are you visiting? Those who are visiting this morning. You like to let us know, stand, let us know who you are and where you're visiting from. Okay. All right. And then to my left. Yes. Amen. Glad to have you. Let's welcome. welcome to the Amen. Thank you so much for being here. All right. Please come back and be with us again. Are there others to my left? All right. Well, to all of our visitors, thank you so much for being here. Uh, to show our appreciation for your being here on this morning. If you have not already uh, received your visitor's gift, please stop by the visitor's desk uh, as you leave. Uh, we have these beautiful uh, Boulevard Stadium Cups uh, that has information regarding the Boulevard Church of Christ printed on it, as well as keychains uh, that will uh, help you to keep your keys in order. Uh, but uh, more than that, it will help you to uh, find uh, the keys that will lead uh, to God's kingdom uh, and uh, bless your life as a result. Amen. Amen. So please uh, make sure you stop by the visitor's desk uh, before you leave today and receive uh, your gift uh, from us uh, to say thank you uh, for being here. Amen. Uh, let me just uh, share the, uh, the announcements, uh, perhaps, are rolling. Uh, and also, uh, we have the bulletins uh, out uh, in the lobby as well as the information center. But let me just share some additional announcements uh, as well. Uh, this is meeting week. Um, monthly meetings, of course, uh, our leadership meeting this Tuesday. 4.30 uh, p.m. via Zoom. This is for all of our elders and deacons. So please be mindful of that, all of our elders and deacons. Your monthly meeting uh, this Tuesday at 4.30 via Zoom. Then our monthly business meeting, of course, Saturday is our annual health fair, community health fair. So Saturday morning from uh, 10 to uh, 2 p.m. We'll be engaged in our uh, community health fair for the White Haven community. Because of that, we're going to move our monthly business meeting to this Thursday evening. All brothers, 21 and over, all brothers, 21 and over, this Thursday evening at 6.30 p.m. That meeting, of course, will be in person here at the Family Life Center. So we, we look for all of our brothers uh, to be here 
uh, and be a part of this monthly business meeting. Then on Wednesday night via Zoom, our back to school prayer service. Uh, please tune in to that as we engage in prayer on behalf of all of our children, um, our administrators and teachers, and all of our schools uh, in this uh, Memphis uh, and Miss South area, in particular our adopted schools, Hoy Lake uh, Intermediate and Whitehaven uh, Elementary. So uh, please, please be a part of this prayer service uh, as we pray on behalf of our children uh, and teachers and parents uh, as they get ready uh, to go back to school uh, for the fall uh, semester. Amen. And then, as mentioned, our annual health fair, uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, probably um, about 25 to 30 vendors. Amen. Who, who are going to be here uh, on this Saturday? The Mammogram Mobile from uh, Baptist uh, Southwest Community College Tech Mobile. Uh, is going to be here. Uh, we're going to have games uh, for the children, the, uh, what do you call them, the bounce houses. I'm not sure what they are. Uh, we're going to have those. Uh, food. Uh, tentatively, we possibly will have a snow cone vendor. So we're going to have a good time uh, in the Lord uh, in, uh, for this Whitehaven community as we share a time where uh, particularly a number of medical vendors are going to be on uh, on site, as well as uh, other vendors uh, who will be here to share information uh, that will be beneficial uh, to us uh, and this Whitehaven community. So please, please plan to be here uh, on this Saturday uh, from 10 uh, until 2 uh, p.m. And then, of course, as we have the information regarding the services for the brother of Brother James Backus, uh, Brother Dwight Backers, we will get that information to you uh, during the week. The week tentatively, I believe uh, it is going to be Saturday uh, at West Oak Grove, but uh, they will be making the final arrangements tomorrow. But as soon as we have the information, uh, we'll get that to you and let, let's support this family uh, how we can. Amen. 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 Uh, of course, we love Brother and Sister Backers uh, dearly. Uh, one of our uh, great servants here, one of our elders, and uh, however we can support this family, uh, we want to do that uh, in typical Boulevard fashion. When, when, when one family goes through it, we all go through it. Amen, Amen somebody. So we, we want to show our love uh, to this family. If I can believe it, God can achieve it. So help me to show it so that others will know it. Give God some praise. Good to see Brother Larry Armstrong sitting over there this morning. And uh, we're going to ask him to come on up. And since, since, you, since you're here this morning, uh, we we must to give you something to do. Uh, come on, give us a close of song this morning as we prepare to dismiss. God bless you. Let us be standing. Onward rejoicing, I tread life's way. Higher I'm climbing each passing day. He'll talk of glory now rising dear, where all shall be made new. I see those hilltops of glory, I now can see, oh brother, once you go with me, I'll soon be safe, yes, when I look and see the hilltops of glory land. 
you know that way down in the jungle, burning sand. Oh Moses, a story for King Nanslan. Never turn back. Words always a sin. Until the journey's end, I see those hilltops of glory. I now can see, oh brother, won't you go with me? We'll soon be safe. Yes, when I look and see the hilltops. Of glory, lie. You know the footsteps of Jesus before rustly we tread. His warning heed, evil allurements cannot prevail. I'm on the other trail. I see those hilltops of glory. I now can say, Oh, brother. Won't you go with me? I'll soon be safe. Yes, when I look and see the hilltops of glory. Yes, way down in Egypt, mid burning sin. Oh, Moses started. Towards King and Slim, we should never turn backwards. Always the same until we've reached. Yes, keep looking toward the top. Yes, my brother. Won't you go with me? I'll soon be safe. Yes, when I look and see the hilltops of glory. One more time I see those hilltops. Yes, my brother. Won't you go with me? I'll soon be safe. Yes, when I look and see the hilltops of glory. Land. Let us pray. Father God, once again, we come to you, Father, thanking you for this day. We thank you for this time we have had in praising and worshiping thee in this holy word and spirit, dear Father. Dear Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for our visitors, dear Father. Dear Father, now we ask that you go with us. We leave this place, but not your presence. Bring us back at the next appointed time, asking for forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>